okay quite a lot of disturbances and glitches today i am hoping we are third time lucky okay let me see if i Okay. Yeah. Oh, lovely! I can see both of you. Super! Finally, third time lucky. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so we, I slowly see people joining in. All right. So we have Devin and Arush with us today. Um, and interestingly, Arush is thirteen. Devin is twenty. And uh, Arush is part of Kova City. And Devin was part of. Uh, is still part of the community but he was at campus a couple of years ago and is currently pursuing his interest in fitness as a professional um, okay so let's start with devin because you know we recently uh, spoken to arush and we had a couple of discussion on how what he's doing uh, so devin maybe you can share a bit about uh, your unschooling journey or your open learning journey maybe start from there and then we will go a bit deeper into your interests. Uh, Arush, just, just keep one frame. That's okay. Yeah, this is perfect. Uh, uh, could you repeat the question again? Yeah, I'm saying let's uh, start from the uh, unschooling or the open learning uh, journey. And then we dive into your interest. So maybe start from the start. Uh, okay, uh, so I started my unschooling journey like 10 years ago, like in 2014. Uh, that was when I came to Aruhi. Um, it was something that I've never heard of, so it was totally new to me. Um, but uh, I wasn't coming to it as an approach of uh, unschooling. I was just coming to it as an approach of... Uh, like the idea that I could learn whatever I thought was interesting to me. And mm -hmm. I kind of really like the idea. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's what I did. And then until like I had like something that I wanted to pursue like more intently so that I could achieve like the level that I wanted. Mm, and then, uh, yeah, I think that's something. Yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe, uh, maybe I will, you know, rephrase my question, and we can go a bit into the details. Uh, in the sense, now, very interestingly, you mentioned, uh, you gave us a perspective that, you know, you were not coming to this whole approach of open learning from a point of view of getting off school, but you know, you being able to do what you like doing or you what you want doing but uh just trying to understand was that the case with your parents also as a family maybe give us some context into why the shift happened uh so uh, i was i was in school i was going to conventional school until fifth grade um i wasn't doing that well academically so it was uh, i guess it was a smart decision to just like drop out and like study at home mm -hmm. homeschool mm -hmm. and then uh, my parents found out about Aruhi and like uh, they wanted to give it a try I guess like they didn't really try to explain it to me as in like they just saw that I I like the place as the space and like I like the idea of doing whatever I wanted so they were fine with that and we just went along with it sure sure um, a lot of parents, uh, David, when they hear this idea that, you know, you can do or you can learn what you like learning or doing and uh, there is no fixed curriculum or there is nothing being taught to you at Arohi, right? Uh, so maybe give a glimpse of your initial years. What all were the things you were doing and how it shaped you as a person? Yeah, okay. Uh, so... In, uh, interestingly, the first thing that I came and did here was uh, fossil finding. Like I remember seeing like a lot of uh, 
goat skulls around campus. So I I really liked dinosaurs back then. I was small. I mean, I still do. Dinosaurs are cool. Uh, uh, so like, like I I like that uh, that I could find dig up bones. There was like a lot of mud. So I was like, there, there's definitely got to be some fossil here. So like that was one of the first things that I did. Then I also wanted to maintain my uh, uh, academic uh, level. Like I wanted to get a little better in the things that I learned at school. So I was also uh, learning a bit of basic maths and uh, grammar and other subjects. I don't remember much which all, but like I was doing that too. And uh, yeah, I think these two I was doing for a while. And then uh, I was also exploring other stuff. Like uh, I was doing uh, movie making, like uh, I used to do stop motion videos with uh, toys and stuff. Like, and I used to explore with that a lot. And uh, there was also uh, a volunteer who came and taught us a bunch of uh, movie making tips. So I went into that a little more. Mm, and then eventually I dropped that too and like uh, and then uh, I started uh, my passion for football the three of us were uh, really interested in it and like we tried uh, uh, pursuing football mm, since uh, we didn't have like the proper resources here to play team sports so we went uh, to Bangalore so that we could play for teams and stuff um, we did that. We played for teams and we played. We got a lot of exposure from uh, that. And uh, eventually I lost my interest in that because for me it didn't feel practical to uh, like, how do I put this? I felt like uh, I could do much more in the time that I was putting for yeah. football. Okay. Um, and uh, I yeah, so I also because because I was in, like also doing football, fitness was also a huge aspect. It was a requirement for football, so that was something I specialized in and uh, something that I was good at. So I uh, um, another another person, from, another child from Aro, he was also doing fitness as a thing. He was a uh, uh, he was a fitness trainer. He is he's still a fitness trainer. So I like that idea of uh, being a fitness trainer because that's something I good, I'm good at. And I thought mm -hmm. that it would help me make easy money. And I could maybe mm -hmm. pursue my other interests once I have the money which I require. Sure, sure. Um, okay, as we, we heard you speak, uh, you know, sometimes for many parents, it's like a worry in the sense like, you know, the child is moving out of interest. Uh, so what would you want to tell those parents? In the sense, the point I'm trying to get is these switching of interest, you know, these exploring, as we say, exploring different interests. What did that do to you? How has it built you as a person? Of course, the learning doesn't go waste. It does come to... Uh, you know, it is of use to you in many different uh, aspects. Uh, so maybe share a bit about how did it shape you as a person? Um, so I have to say like uh, back then, even I like I had like a lot of stress about that. Like I, I like I like what am I doing? Why do I not know what I want to do and stuff? Um, but like I was like able to apply a lot of things that I learned from my other interests that I dropped. Uh, and like, I guess like once I got older, I realized like it takes time to realize uh, what I really want. In fact, I still don't know what I really want to do. I Like I'm just doing fitness as a thing that I'm really good at and it helped me make money. Um, and I still don't know what I want to do. That's something that I'm still figuring out. Um, but uh, like, I I don't know. It's it's just something that uh, it's a process, I guess. Like, sure, 
sure sure yeah yeah it uh, just all parents out there uh, you know sometimes we don't give our teenagers the due that uh, they are also equally trying to figure out things and uh, see what their interests are and definitely we know so many adults who go on to figure out different professions uh, personally i have also done that through my 20s and now 30s and as of now i am doing this but i have changed two or three professions and as devin very mm -hmm. rightly put sometimes it's a process um, and uh, there's no hurry to reach anywhere and definitely not the phase of teenage or youth that is the time that Uh, your child can invest in their interests and deeply explore uh, different interests if that's the case uh, thank you devin for bringing out that point uh, and sharing it with us uh, now maybe i'll just shift a bit focus to arush and uh, you know last time arush we spoke we kind of got a, a sense of your whole unschooling journey uh, trying to do homeschooling then coming to arohi uh, and then as of now you are at cover city uh, you know deep diving into your interest of uh, video making video editing uh, you know the last couple of weeks all of you have been into this whole portfolio cv uh, getting an internship what has been the uh, what has what have been these days been like for you give us a you know snapshot of what it is like uh yeah i think definitely it's like uh, into i would say two sides for me at least so there is one side which is like me and few other people who have like this is the first time we're doing an internship and like we have a port we still have to kind of build a portfolio kind of thing uh, from scratch but uh, people like the other group which already went for internships and came back i think they already had like a little base structure in the portfolio um so mm. yeah i think um, they found it easy with the portfolio a little more since they just had to add the internship part and what kind of uh, what they did kind of thing uh, during these 3 months of the internship so yeah i think except that uh, for us as well at least for me i felt like a little frustrated because of uh, wordpress because i was not exactly f uh, finding out things like fast uh, and i wanted to kind of finish this uh, thing like website and cv so that i send mails quicker um, so that i get more responses obviously but um, yeah everything changed when uh, i found out like i like got a contact from someone and then i kind of contacted them and then like since they heard my background already like i had a call with them and then they heard my background so then after that they were like very interested and they asked me to send like a little write up about myself so i did that and then after that it was like uh, they wanted to take it to the next level and i was like yeah sure internship would be great um so yeah, yeah they are offering me an internship uh, so i need to finish my cv and portfolio so that i could send it to them as quick as possible and we could like, i could secure the, uh, this internship so i just mm -hmm. need to do the cv and portfolio currently and i think yeah the journey was great because all of us were co uh, coordinating on different like difficulties and technical errors all kinds of errors and all things so we were like looking for let's say photographs or things like that uh, many coordination like a lot of coordination was happening so i think that's my favorite part so yeah mm -hmm. okay so um, like i'm just trying to uh, you know uh, elaborate on the point that you're saying you know having the cohort with you you know bunch of other teenagers who are also kind of in the same process um, and i i also saw you guys were bouncing off ideas with each other what is working for you what's not working so did all of that like add to the whole process yeah definitely like uh, i had kind of like this one imagination in my head so then i used cohort help to kind of put it into reality and then they were also like kind of uh, they also kind of liked it so few of them also tried to do it with their content so i think that like really worked out for all of us so 
yeah i think we co-created few designs and stuff so that was really nice to see and also like we were constantly coming up with ideas and sharing that okay so this is my idea and this is what i want to create so i think that was definitely like very like many inputs were given so i think yeah that was really good okay and um, interestingly you said you're 13 uh, and you already you're saying you got an internship we've gone way to ahead i want to know like a lot of people question us who will give them internship you know who will give these teenagers internship and uh, so uh, let's go step by step uh, share a bit about what are these contacts how are you you know getting these contacts how are you contacting them what are the different uh, you know uh, areas you go to in order to get these references and how are, how are you going about it share a bit about that right uh so actually i am going by the sense so i think there'll be one first circle of people who i know let's say uh, david so david has a friend who does video editing let's say and uh, no, they could like offer me an say, uh, arush talk about what is actually whatever your contact list is right right so i like uh, should i share the contact list itself no don't share the contact list but say like you contacted people from the community then people who came to the campus for uh, experience i'm saying in that sense like so people understand what are the ways even if they have to get an internship as teenagers what can you know otherwise many a times it's like blank where do i start so give them some uh, glimpse of how it can be uh, approached yeah i think definitely again that circle method so in that circle there are people like friends family and like few relatives and people uh, so then after that you can step into another circle like let's say friends friend or uh, some kind of a family relative or someone uh, who you kind of know but also do not know okay so then um, yeah then you step out into the like actual outer world uh, and you kind of look into companies which you really like to a uh, kind of want to work for and then like at least if you do not get an internship kind of approach them saying that okay yeah this is like hi i'm arush and i'm doing businesses so you might get an internship and not but you like if you give effort uh, then definitely at least one of them will agree so yeah definitely yeah but i got okay. my internship from like this circle so i kind of asked a few people like in campus few people came as guests so i kind of asked contact from them i asked contacts from let's say uh, my mother's friends sometimes uh, and yeah these are like the things that i've tried out still there is like a huge people huge amount of people that i can ask so yeah sure 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 uh maybe i'm just going to pose the same question to devin as well because uh you know devin shared uh, what all you went through okay now you said you tried professional football for a couple of years and then you thought okay fitness maybe as of now i can try maybe uh, talk a bit about that transition and what was going through did you reach out to other people how did you reach at this position okay uh, this is the point i want to go what all did you go through till you arrived here uh um so it was actually very uh, lucky and fortunate for me that uh, the other child over here in naruhi uh, was uh, into the field so like he knew the ins and outs and like he had a lot of experience so like i was basically like under his wing like he showed me the ropes like um so i guess it was easy for me because he had that experience and i guess i i honestly made that decision because like he like he told me like how easy it can be um i guess uh, right now is where i still need to work on uh, reaching out to more people cuz like this is something that i've just recently started like 3 months ago so um yeah yeah okay so all teenagers out there uh, who might be wondering how you can get your internship reach out to family friends friends of friends um of course with a community like arohi it just expands even further uh, but the other areas that one could definitely look at is linkedin 
directly applying to uh, companies yes don't stop at any point go ahead give that application give your uh, cv portfolio and you know that itself is a huge learning process um all right so uh, uh, maybe arush you can share a bit about what is the uh, feeling like before going into the internship what is your prep like so i'm kind of little prepping for things like let's say physically i'll be sitting uh, most of the time and kind of in my laptop or desktop doing this and kind of editing um so but i'm also into kind of film making and they have that feature as well so yeah i i'm not very sure but i'll i'll have to kind of get up and walk around every hour so yesterday actually me and david were having like a discussion about what we're supposed to do if we're having like this internship thing so then uh, we kind of reflected that uh, if i sit for let's say 10 hours straight without getting up or nothing my posture will be very bad and like i'll not be at all energetic after the thing so uh, he suggested that i could like get up every like one or two hours and take like a 10 minute break and then just walk around drink some water so i think yeah that, that is physical preparation for, at least for me uh, mental preparation i would say would be like i kind of thought that instead of more like uh, having fun or like taking more breaks and things which like few times i uh, really work hardly work uh, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to cut down those days, kind of thing. Okay. Maybe like not at all have them. So yeah, that mm -hmm. is like the kind of preparation I am going through. Um, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Devin, last maybe yesterday and today, you've been kind of seeing these over city teenagers. You know what all they've been up to. So as uh, maybe you can share with the audience as someone who is seeing this externally uh, what do you think of it or uh, you know what would you like to say teenagers about who may not really understand how a coercity uh, would function or how these teenagers are going about their uh, profession um, so like uh, like I've been seeing them work um like uh, the things that they do together like the, the way they reflect with each other and like they plan together i guess uh, that's something someone could use as someone who's uh, pursuing something like that um like uh, um, that type of exposure like that uh, like um, that type of support like someone else is also uh, working towards something that they want and uh, they like they uh, have a way of uh, reflecting and uh, connecting and helping each other so and like relating with each other so i guess it kind of uh, gives that uh, morale i guess and mm -hmm. i can't find the right word but yeah yeah i think morale is the perfect word definitely yeah Okay, uh, I think we can draw a close to this conversation. Uh, but before we go, uh, maybe a few last words in terms of what would you want to tell teenagers who are, um, you know, kind of grappling with uh, career confusion or uh, for some of them academics could be a challenge or, you know, not knowing where to head, uh, what would you like to tell them maybe arush could go first and then david can share yeah i think i would say the same thing that if you're having an interest to pursue that's really great but do not get too stressed about uh, what am i supposed to choose out of many interests uh, so you can take your time and you can choose one so yeah i think that's my point to make for things okay yeah, I guess what I have to say something similar to that. Uh, it's like you pursue what you're interested in, and like I I can't say that it's necessary to take academics, but like if your interest collides, like requires that you learn something like that, then I I suppose it should be interesting for you rather than boring. So it wouldn't be an issue to take up the necessary academics for that interest. So that way. Okay. Okay. We had one question asked in our WhatsApp group to be asked to you both. Uh, 
uh, which was like uh, if you are choosing this way of you know pursuing your career what about uh, uh, subjects like english uh, math uh, or maybe other things uh, how do you pick those up because you know it's it's not as a curriculum it's not given to you so how are you taking up these skills i'm just going to rephrase that a bit more to the audience uh, a lot of what we say math and english actually uh, comes down to communication skills or life skills in terms of addition subtraction which everyone needs to know so maybe devin if you can share how do you pick up these you know how can you write talk to people or how do you do this basic math things you are into fitness but i'm sure it needs how do you handle your money so that would require some bit of those number handling uh, so yeah how does that come into play uh i guess like uh, you i mean you have to learn a little bit of maths and like i think that's something you learn eventually i mean i haven't seen someone that doesn't know maths like per se <laughs> <laughs> right 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 mm hmm arush you want to share your thought yeah the actual truth is kind of like after a point even like the most stubborn one of us who do not want to do any of like english science or anything like after the point that we realize that we need a particular subject i think we like grasp it very fast so like okay. yeah example math if like i need to know ma math when i'm going out let's say uh, and i really need that because i'm getting let's say very frustrated of not able, uh, not being able to calculate then obviously i have a need so i'll do that i mean yeah mm -hmm. that's how seen people do because me myself as well uh, that if i have a need i'll definitely go and do that so yeah lovely so just to kind of also share i know all of you are now full fledged into seeing how your write up is coming how your cv is coming full grammar is coming into place uh, you are looking at grammarly other uh, ai tools which can help you with these things so just to parents out there uh, we can chill the these folks are very well versed with what's in tune now and also as arush and both both arush and devin uh, mentioned when there is a need skills get picked up and skills like addition subtraction or speaking writing come more under life skills which are required and need not be really enforced through an academic uh, route so that's how these uh, folks have gone about picking up these skills uh, as and how they need it they've kind of gone into it and with as the need requires the intensity to be much more the intensity also goes uh, higher so okay with that maybe we can come to an end of this live uh, thank you devin and thank you arush for sharing um, and giving us a glimpse into your journey yeah thank you for having me here thank you thank you bye thank you yeah bye, bye.